in the last video, we added cities using uh, sync fusion dialog boxes. And we're going to be editing cities on this occasion, i.e. updating a detail record in a master detail form, again using Syncfusion dialog boxes to make the edit and to issue warnings to the user if they've selected a duplicate city or failed to select a city. Let's have a look at the code. As always, if you haven't got Visual Studio open, open it and then open the Blazor Countries project. To edit a city, uh, the method we'll be adopting is similar to the one used for adding cities. Uh, we will add an edit button that will open a separate edit a city uh, Syncfusion dialog, having first established which record from the city grid the user has selected. When the save button on the edit dialog is clicked, the system will check for duplicates and either issue a warning via another dialog or save the edit. So the first thing we must do is to add a button to the countries and cities page. So let's scroll down and simply add a button. I've got the code already copied. So it's going to be exactly the same as the add button, except it's going to say edit a city and the on click event is edit city. Now, when when the user does click that button, it's going to open a dialogue for editing the city. Um, so we'll go through adding the, the dialogue for that first. And we may as well just put it at the bottom here. And the code is this. And what the dialogue is going to say is, is given a reference. Uh, it's modal as usual. Its visibility is going to be set to false. Uh, it's got a, we're using a data model called edit cities and we've got an event cities save edit and it's going to be showing uh, the name of the city and the population. I did ponder uh, whether to use the same dialogue as the add city and use the same event cities save as on the add city. Uh, and then just add uh, if statements to, to handle which way the, the code should move. But I've decided just for simplicity, we'll have a separate, uh, a separate dialogue, a separate model and a separate uh, event. We've got the same problem about checking for duplicate cities um, and as we had for countries. And we're going to handle this in the same way as well, in that we're going to be using a uh, different SQL stored procedure, and then we'll swap out the existing stored procedure for the modified one, and where the modified one will return a value of zero if no duplicate is being added, or 99 if a duplicate is found. So we need to go to SQL Management Studio, and we're going to be adding a new stored procedure, the code for which I've got here already. So this is uh, going to be called store SP cities update with duplicate checking. The parameters that are being passed in is the city ID the city name, the country ID, and the city population. And we're going to declare the result value, which is going to get returned. And it's going to check uh, where the city name is not the same as an existing city name, uh, where the country ID is the same as the country that's already added, and the city ID is not the same as the one that's already exists. I hope that's clear. Um, what we're doing is checking that the 
the database doesn't already contain a city name with the one that we're entering, where the country ID is the same as the country ID we're adding. And we're going to check that it's not the, if, if the user clicks save when editing a particular city and doesn't choose to change it, but leaves it the same, we don't want it to uh, throw an error if it happens to be the same record. So that's going to, if it finds a duplicate, is going to send a result of 99. Otherwise, result value of, of zero, meaning success. So we'll create the stored procedure and close that. We don't need it any longer. And go back to the Visual Studio code. Now, that does, of course, mean that we need to change city service to uh, cater for the for the new stored procedure so if we go to cities service and we're going to add or uh, insert uh, a an update here's the existing update we'll add add the new one underneath that and the code is this And this follows exactly the same pattern as for checking for duplicates uh, for, for countries. So we're adding it to the premises, the city name, the country ID, the city population and the city ID. That's going off into the stored procedure and the stored procedure is going to return the return value. We also need to change the iCity service to add in the new task there you'll see again that it's an integer rather than a boolean and um, is passing in these parameters all right i'll save all that before going on i think we can close the city service and the i city service The other problem we potentially have is that the user clicks to clicks the edit a city key as the button but hasn't actually selected a city uh, so we need to again have some form of warning to tell the user that they've made that error so we're going to add another separate dialog box to warn them that they failed to select a city so we'll add that dialog So it's given a name, it's modal, visibility is false, saying warning, you must select a city from the grid, and it's then going to have an event, close dialog, missing city. And we ought to do uh, add that uh, code for that closing missing city straight away before we forget it. Um, so I'll just add that. And I'll just put it right at the bottom of the C sharp code. And we also need in the data grid, we need an event uh, to detect whether the user has actually, that's in the grid itself, isn't it? We need to add in here an event to uh, detect which row the user has selected and that's done on a grid event so i'll put that in here and we've got a row selected handler which we'll uh, add some code for that a little bit later so the code changes are again there's quite a lot of them uh, again four or five changes maybe more uh, and it's just a matter of 
effectively working through a list, making sure that everything has been been added. So we need to declare the dialogues for the dialog edit city, the dialog missing city, and we need to declare the edit cities object. So let's do those first of all. Try, try harder to copy. As I say, I suspect we could probably have done this with just one object, uh, but I'm taking the slightly easy route of having two separate objects. We also need to, I'm having, we're, we're using selected city ID in a number of places, so we'll add that. And the I mean, that's used by the uh, select row event. So we'll need to add the code for selecting the row to identify the, the city ID that's being chosen. So we'll put that at the bottom. I'm simply adding these things at the at the end of the code here. It's probably more logical. There's probably a more logical way to order them. Um, but we'll stick with this for the moment. We've added the logic to obtain details of the selected city. Now we need to add the logic to open the dialog when the edit a city is, is selected. Which is this. So when they click edit a city, uh, they're going to make sure that the, the city is selected uh, and if it is, or rather if it isn't, uh, it'll say, it'll throw up the missing dial, missing city dialogue. Otherwise, it'll populate the edit, edit cities object uh, with the cities get one for the selected city ID, i.e. it'll populate the the object for the city data for that particular city. And then it'll show the edit city dialog. Then we've got to deal with the logic to handle the non-selection of a city. So what happens here, the missing city dialog. Or have we already done that? We've probably already done that. Uh, so we then need to add the code for dealing with when they actually save save the city so it's going to run the city's update with duplicate check if success is not equal to zero i.e equals 99 it'll throw up the dialogue duplicate city warning otherwise It'll hide the edit city dialog. Uh, it'll change the state to, to force everything to be refreshed. Uh, edit cities will, this, it, the edit cities object will be set to uh, a new cities object. And it'll then get the cities for the particular country, for the uh, country that's uh, already been selected from the drop down box. And I think lastly, that's it. Uh, apart from the situation can occur um, where uh, the city ID, selected city ID remains in memory and the user changes the country at the top of the, from the drop down list, then selects to edit a city, uh, but hasn't selected a city 
the original city ID will still be in memory and it'll try to uh, edit the wrong city. So in the, uh, let's just find it in the, on change for the country, right down here, I think it is. Yes, it'll make sure that the city is, is set back to zero. So that's it. We're not showing any errors. Let's save everything and run it. So if we look at cities, select a country, let's say France, and we've got two records here. Let's say we want to edit one, let's say Paris, and we want to change its name. That's fine can change it back. That's fine. If we choose, let's choose Lyon, edit, and change that name to Paris. We should find that since Paris already exists, it's going to prevent us changing the name uh, from Lyon to Paris. And it does. So I'll just close that out. Let's go to Germany. If I select edit a city, it's saying I must select a, select a city from the grid. So we seem to have uh, got the ability to edit a city. It checks that we've selected a city and it stops us from editing a city to have the same name as an existing city. So that all seems to work. Next on the list of things to do, is to add the ability to delete a city um, and that'll come next time. I'll put a link in the description below for uh, the, where you can find the code uh, for the work we've done in this video and for previous videos and there you'll also find uh, the full code for the full project.